Let's, so last time we were speaking about, we've been talking about the prime decomposition of knots. And last week we, so let's review what we did last time. So last time, we were looking at the theorem, uh, the prime decomposition of theorem of Just, just to, to remind you, uh, the notation. So we have to recall what it means for the, uh, what the connect sum of two knots means. Recall that we write uh, if k is a knot, if k, k1, k2 are knots. sum of two knots means well, here. k is a knot then the connect sum k1 uh, hash k2 means there is a separating there is a two sphere is intersecting K in exactly two points. So we have some knot and we have a here is K. We have some two sphere, two, two sphere S, and it intersects the knot in two points. the two points on the sphere with an arc. Oh, I didn't change these. And if we connect the two points with an arc on one side of the two sphere, Gives us K1, 
And if we connect the two arcs on the sphere and go along the other part of the axis, the knot K, then it gives us K2. So that's the definition of kinetic sum. And then the theorem said, Oh, and, and also recall a knot prime okay, it's prime is whenever it's a connect sum of two knots then one of them has to be the other So then the, the theorem said, says, says, if K is a non-trivial not, then K, and we can write it as a connect sum of prime. So the sentence is one. If you, if you have non-trivial knot, then you can decompose it into prime knots, just like you can decompose a number into a product of prime numbers. Uh, and so we proved this using the additivity of the genus. So last week we proved this theorem, additivity of the genus, which says that the genus of the kinetic sum of two knots is the sum of the genus of each knot. Genus of a knot is the genus, minimal genus. So we've proved this much of, of uh, we've proved this part of the theorem. The second part of the theorem is a unique mistake. So if you like, this is existence. Now the second part of the theorem says this decomposition is unique uh, in a certain sense. Unique. Which means that if So if we have two prime decompositions of a knot, then they have to then the prime knots in each and the compositions have to coincide. So then in 
the number on, of the first type has to equal the number of the second type, and uh, up to after relabeling, the J highs, we have So after relabeling, this K1 has to be this J1, this K2 has to be this J2. So it's just like the uniqueness of a prime decomposition of a, of a number. Okay, so today we'll, we'll prove, or we'll get as far as we can in improving this, and to do so, we'll prove a lemma. decompositions of a knot of the following form. Suppose K is the connect sum of two knots P and Q where P is prime where P is prime Suppose K has another decomposition and K is K1, could be some K2 uh, for, for some Okay, so we suppose our knot has two decompositions, as two pieces P and Q, and also as K1 and K2. Where, while these three can be anything, this P is prime. Okay. I'll draw a picture to, to see uh, what it looks like in a moment. But so that's the hypothesis, then the claim is that then either one, there is a knot. Again, I'll draw a picture in a moment to see what the situation looks like. Or, there is a knot. Which I'll call K2 hat, such that K uh, K1. Such that K2. So that's the theorem, and let me draw a picture so we know what's happening here. So 
here is x. Какой okay, окей? Okay. Я смотрю. Тима, вы, вы понимаете? Очень То есть, если разложен P простой узел, то в таком случае он на самом деле был или в K1, или в K2. Да. So here, so let me explain where how this matches with the theorem. Okay, so I'll draw okay. so I'm gonna have now so when we have each we have connect some like this, it always means we have a, a sphere that who's in, who, on, on one side of which we have P and one side of which we have Q. So, here's going to be... This blue, it's going to be P, P, and and the separating and the and the sphere for the connection of P and Q is this sphere here. And so outside the blue, I'll draw it in yellow. This is Q. sum of this not P, so it's this not P, and the not the blue the yellow not Q. And now I'm going to draw K1 and K2. And I'll draw it slightly parallel. So K1 is going to be on this side. Okay. 
So now, so have you guys, are you okay with, firstly, I've written K as a connect sum of two knots, the blue and the yellow. Remember what that connect sum, if you have two knots, just delete a point. Do you see this knot in blue? Second. So that's P, and on the right hand side, the yellow. That's Q, is that okay? No? Yes? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to also decompose it as two knots, K1 and K2, where K1 is going to be everything on the left hand side of these two green dots. And on the right hand side, K2. Okay, so as in the theorem, I've decomposed as two uh, in two ways, and in this case, I have the figure 8, which is prime, is G this one. Okay, then the theorem, so let's, so in this, so I'll draw a picture of. This meets the hypothesis. Because P, yeah, P is the figure eight. Incidentally, how do we know? Do you remember how we proved or oh, we were seeing the figure as prime? So I, I think, and I think we worked, we constructed a ciphered surface of it, the genus one. In fact, just using uh, ciphered algorithm, we constructed. Is genus one, then it can't be prime. Why is that? Вот сумма, да, сумма родов. Поменяйте. Единицу нельзя представить в виде суммы натуральных чисел. Говорите. It's not as a sum to others, mm -hmm. one of the genuses will be zero. And this is... Mm. Right, right. Because if, if we wrote k is k1, k2, then the genus, if, if k is a, is a not genus 1, then we have 1. And here's our figure 8, which is 1, and so, as you said, 1 this has to be 0, except for that. Very good. Okay, so this, this example satisfies the theorem, so let's see how the, uh, let's see the result. So uh, we should have one of these situations. So here's the idea. We have, notice that, let me, hmm, maybe if I You can turn. Left and right. Oh, well, I really want to... Maybe if I use colors, it's just a matter of duplicating the picture. Okay, so let me draw... I'm going to draw... What is it? K1, K2, K1. So I'm going to draw a K1 hat, so that, P, uh, so that K1 is the decomposition of P in this K1. Okay, so let's now look at look at K1. So K1 is everything on the left hand side. That's this going around. I'm going to draw K1 hat in pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 
the two separating points between K and K2, okay, and connect it up to the, the two separating points for P and Q. So, and the red So the red is K1 hat. So let's see, can we... The idea is we're decomposing K1 into two pieces, P and K1 hat. So you notice this left-hand side, K1, it's the red, red, plus the blue. Okay, the left-hand side is red plus the blue. So I've written K1 as K1 hat plus, plus P. Okay. So K1 is would be it's not here. Okay. On the other hand, the theorem says that Q should be the connect sum of K1 hat and K2, so can we see that? So Q is the yellow, so can we see that the yellow is the red? The red and K2, which is on the right. We can see that, so in Q is K1 hat. So Q starts here, and then it traces out, and we can see it's the red. Red and the, and the right hand side. Okay. Are we okay? Do we see the theorem being happy? Yes. Okay, so this is the idea. Okay, so now let's look at how we can prove this. Firstly, uh, let, let S be the separating circle. Remember that when we form a connect sum, we have a two sphere which which intersects and not in two places. So in the picture, S would be in the picture. Here is S. So intersects K in two points on in on one side I have K one and the other side I have K two. Okay. Now let B be a three ball. Well, let let's say. Um, S prime be a separating two sphere for K P Okay, so I'm gonna skip let B be a 
So what I mean here is, when we form the connect sum, we know we have a two-sphere that meets a knot in two places. Okay. On one side of the two-sphere, well, you have P, and on the other side of the two-sphere, you have Q. And I'm just saying, let one of the sides be uh, B, which would be a through-ball, which I'll... So, this means... So a two sphere and just fill it up and it's a three ball. So let's draw in, in a picture. This blue circle is well, this is my uh, depicts my separating two sphere for P and Q. And so this the three ball here containing P, that's my B. Okay. So just this 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 part of the knot P lies inside a three ball. Okay, and that's what I've called B. Okay. So now in the example work linearly, so I'll go to the left one, step down to it. Notice in the example, In the example B, or let me say S, the two step S lies outside the three ball B. So notice S lies outside uh, the three ball. Three ball B. Now, if, if we have the situation where the two-sphere lies outside the ball, then we, we showed how to prove the theorem. We take k1 hat to be the part of the knot inside the two-sphere, on, on the side of the two-sphere, outside of the ball. Then we took the red. So if in the setup, we just take K1 hat to be the part of uh, K, K1 outside the ball. Okay, so take this K1 and subtract from K1 the interior of this ball and we're left with the red. Okay, so it's just this outside bit. So, and so we could take K1 hat. So we took K1 and we subtracted the part in piece in uh, B. And then let's see, minus B. And then So what I mean is we took we took K1 
so to, to define K1 here, we just took K1, K1, this part, and we subtracted the bit in P, the in B, okay, and then gave us the read. Okay. And so that's what I mean by K1 backslash B. And then when I say closed along the boundary B, I mean we've got these two intersection points and we connect them up and it gives us K1. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, please, one yeah. second, uh, it can be repeated in Russian. Ulyan, I just want to make sure you can understand. Let's repeat what was done. Let's go. 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 Это разделяет узел на два, на К1 и К2. К1 справа, К2 слева. И вот что означает эта такая внутренняя, которая Б написана? Б, в котором заключен этот узел П. Да. В варианте, что этот шар внутри этой сферы, и поэтому все хорошо. Мы можем выбрать К1 как просто часть. We need no can some seconds in Russian. I was just trying to put you guys. Так еще Тимур, понимаете вообще о чем? Что здесь в принципе доказывает? Да, что там три болт написано. Три болт, потому что в топологии часто имеют дело с вещами разных размерностей. И, соответственно, это раз... скольки мерный объект. Вот шар трехмерный, сфера, э, часто пишут два сферы, в том смысле, что двумерная сфера. Потому что вообще-то в топологии бывает и трехмерная сфера, и, и так далее. Да? Вот. Итак, все-таки, давайте, Давид. Он доказывает лемму, которая здесь была сформулирована. В чем лемма? Что если какой-то узел яв... имеет в себе П под узел, и может быть разложен э, в сумму К1 и К2, то на самом деле один из этих узлов может быть разложен в сумму П и что-то. Вот, вот самая простая часть картинки, когда узел на К1 и К2 разложен такой вертикальный прямой, и при этом удалось узел П вырезать, так, так понятно, да? Все, замечательно, вырезалось. Так, все. Thank you. Okay, so here's the picture. We have a ball. Inside it is P, and everything outside is Q. Okay. We have the sphere outside the ball. Okay. And inside the sphere we have K1. And outside the sphere we have K2. Okay. Now we take K1 hat to be the part of the inside the sphere between uh, that lies outside the ball. So this is whatever lies inside that's K1 hat. Okay, so then we see that K1 is K1 hat connects on P okay. and Q, which is the red, is K1 hat connects on And if the other, on the other on the other hand, if we could also have if S lies inside the ball. Inside B, so we have B, B, so we on one side we have uh, B, and on one side we have Q, and if S lies inside the ball, S, inside is K1, and outside is K2. Times K2. Then, oh, I erased the theorem statements that we.
So this, the second part, this would be part two of the theorem, which said there was a K2 Oh, uh, I see, I see. My picture's not good. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Inside B. It's not what I say. If, uh, if, if B, sorry, it doesn't, it, uh, what I see doesn't, uh, is equivalent to this picture. So if, if, uh, if S is not, uh, if S lies outside B, Outside B, sorry, S uh, B. So inside we have P, outside we have Q, and we have K1 inside and K2. Then, then we take, and we've got two intersection points here, two intersection then we take K2 to be the, uh, the part of K2 outside uh, B. So here is B, K2 is K2 minus uh, B. Because then, so, so here's K2 is everything outside outside the sphere. Okay. We want to decompose it as P and another piece. Okay. So P is this piece. So we just take, then we connect these two. Uh, okay. Okay. Whatever, uh, however these connect. Uh, this would be our K2. Then K2, K2 hat, then K2 will be K2 plus the P, and Q will be the piece uh, K1 plus the piece outside uh, outside the sphere of K2 and outside of the sphere. Okay, again, closed. Closed. So either either uh, the sphere uh, lies outside the ball, or or the ball oh, the sphere lies outside the ball. Тимур, поняли? Что он сейчас нарисовал? Что у вас B не обязательно лежал внутри S. На самом деле, например, мог лежать просто вне. В таком случае фактически К1 и К2 меняются ролями. Поняли тебя? Okay, so if, I, if so, if if the sphere and the ball are disjoint, okay, either we have this situation or we have this situation. You know, I'm not sure you what's the problem. Yes, 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 we understand. Okay, so if the sphere and the ball are disjoint, then we have one of these two, either of these two pictures, and if we have this picture, then we see how to prove the theorem. 
So uh, it is so if is and the ball which is two uh, in the boundary of the ball. Boundary the, the ball is different from the um, different from S, either we have this picture or this picture, in which case we have the cool. So so we need to show Find a separating sphere for and a, and a separating ball B so that we have this property. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our technique of surgery. So the idea is use well the surgery. If we just start off with S and B, can you guys tell me D маленькая такая означает границу. То есть если сфера и граница шара не пересекаются, то мы все понимаем. Intersection between a sphere and the boundary of B. What is the boundary of B? What topologically? Что такое граница шара? Вен. Spheres. Good. So these are both spheres. So if I have two spheres and I'm allowed to wiggle them a little bit, how would they intersect? How could they intersect? Пересечение двух сфер это что? Могут две сферы касаться? Две сферы могут касаться? Касаться в точку? Да. Нет, без обсуждали. Могут или нет? В принципе, априори. Могут. Скажите. Понятно, да? Можем чуть-чуть сдвинуть, и тогда пересечение исчезнет. Хорошо, хорошо. Это понятно. So we have to do a little change to the sphere and the in the ball to make them uh, miss. So, but now, how could I? Well, how could they intersect so that I couldn't wiggle them to remove the intersection? Yeah. They can intersect in a circle. That's right. So, sphere. Понятно, да? Пересечение двух сфер – это пустое множество, точка или окружность. In general, two surfaces will intersect in, in spheres. In circles. So 
we start with S and B. Okay. Now, just and this when I say wiggling, why why are we allowed to wiggle? Well, we're thinking about S and S and P are. We just want to find S and P so that they're separating one, so that each separate K is uh, as we define them. Okay. Now this wiggling, wiggling is only going to change uh, the sphere and the and the two sphere in very small in a very small uh, nearer nearer point on their intersection. Okay. Now, if on the one hand uh, the sphere intersects the knot K in two points. Okay. So, um, well, maybe that would be one way. We could wiggle the knot. If the knot happened to be at that intersection point, then we could just wiggle the knot a little bit. Можно чуть-чуть right подвинуть э, линию, которая задает узел, и тогда она не пройдет через эту одну точку. Потому что в пространстве узел можно менять, не меняя его именно как узел, да? Помните? So, so the knot intersects the sphere in two points. If the, if the sphere intersected the other ball in a point, we could first make sure the knot intersected our sphere away from it, just by a little modification of the knot. And then we do our wiggling to pull them apart. So this is idea of, uh, it's called transfer subtlety, this is the, the, the name we use when we put this wiggling. By, we say by transfer subtlety, we can assume that the intersection of two closed surfaces is a collection of, of disjoint circles. Okay, so, we've seen that if this intersection were empty, then we proved our theorem. Okay, but to start off with, all we know is that we can choose S and B so that their intersection is a collection of circles. Okay? So our goal will be to modify B or S to remove these circles. Okay? It's a bit like when we proved the additivity of the genus theorem. Okay? We had two surfaces uh, intersecting in circles, and, and it, was, it was, happened to be a a closed surface and uh, and a surface of boundary, and in that case we had the intersection where was an arc and a collection of circles. Remember that, and we removed the collection of circles in the intersection using surgery. So if we had an intersection, we changed. So this is Wait, one second. Uh, Timo, why is there written several circles? Although it seems that two spheres по одной окружности. Понимаете или нет? Это важно. Ну, так почему она должна оказаться по одной окружности? Нет, вообще-то две сферы не могут пересечься по нескольким окружностям. А смысл здесь вот какой. Когда у вас есть сфера, отделяющая узел, да, то для этого они, эти два узла, должны быть хорошо расположены. Вот, у вас узел большой разложен как К1 и К2. Отлично. Вы можете так все расположить, чтобы была такая сфера, да? Но секундочку. Отдельно вы можете расположить, чтобы было внутри сферы P, а, внутри, а вне сферы это самый Q, да? Но это другое расположение. А теперь смотрите, а вам нужно одновременно. Нельзя быть уверенным, что удастся и то, и то одновременно сделать сферами. Поэтому на самом деле постановка такая. Мы берем и сначала делим узел на K1 и K2. Получили такую поверхность. Потом ее начинаем сгибать, деформировать как-то, не, только не рвать, то есть непрерывно только комутопировать, да? И, соответственно, в какой-то момент вы добьетесь, что возникнет сфера, которая отделяет P от всего узла. И в этот момент одна из них станет сферой, а та, которая была сферой раньше, она к этому моменту очень сильно изогнется и превратится в какую-то просто любую поверхность. Почему не стать сферой? Нет, не стать, а мы, мы можем так узел расположить, чтобы она была сферой. Отлично. Но к этому моменту другая совершенно перестанет быть сферой и станет чем-то таким. То есть топологически это сфера, а в пространстве это будет расположено крайне хитро. И поэтому пересечение может быть большим вполне набором окружностей. Okay, so
uh, change our B or our S so that we know we to remove these intersections. Okay, so, so we have S. So this, firstly, note that the circles, the circles, and the intersection First, we can assume they miss K. Right. So let me draw the picture. So here is here is S. It's a sphere. Let's suppose C is one of these circles. So this sphere intersects a three ball in a collection of circles. See? And on the other hand, K intersects the sphere S. How what does that intersection look like? The sphere S and the not K. So remember S is a separating uh, two sphere for the connect sign. Two points. two points, right, so in two points, somewhere, okay. Okay, so on the sphere we have two points, okay, on the other hand we have these curves C, okay, and what I, and here I've said that we can assume that these curves miss the two knots of, the two points of the knot. So again, that would be what we call by transversality because we've got two points and these curves. Now moving, we could move the three ball or the, or the, or the, or the sphere, however we want, so that we could wiggle these curves. So if, if, if K were on this curve C, okay, then we could wiggle uh, either S or, or C, or we could wiggle lots of things. We could wiggle B, so that it misses the, the point. So you've got this three ball, and you've got a surface cutting through it. Okay, and uh, we could just wiggle anything. Wiggle. Can you mm, write um, uh, the word wiggle? Okay. Uh, <laughs> they don't know oh, the uh, English word. I know. Okay, this is написано по букву. В тему я верю, что он не знает. Okay, uh, uh, if K lies on C... No, no, one word. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, uh, just since... We understand it in Russian, but... K in the six and points. I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it, just in a full sentence. Uh, since K in points, uh, we can... We will... It's a technical term. Perturb is another reason. Mm -hmm. Formally, the word is perturb. Uh, B. So then. Russian it is called общее положение. Нет. Вот то, что он сейчас использует, идея. В случае общего положения точка не будет лежать на кривой. Но сфера она большая, и точка, по идее, лежит более-менее где угодно. И вы можете чуть-чуть ее подвинуть, чтобы она ушла с этой кривой. Понятно? Okay, so we have a two sphere, we have C and we have K. These are zero dimensional, these are one dimensional, and they lie on a two dimensional space. So the idea is that because zero plus one is less, the strict less than two, there's, uh, there's an extra dimension, in which case we can uh, uh, 
wiggle, which means that we can wiggle uh, either of these so that they miss. So it's like if, if two knots are in th two two knots are in three space, okay. The dimension of a knot is one, okay. Because one plus one is less than three, if the knots intersected, we could pull them apart using our extra dimension. Okay, so that's called transversality. So you could say by transversality, uh, a knot can be does not it does not have self intersections because if it does, we can always pull it off. On the other hand, if we drew a curve in the plane. We can't wiggle it to remove these intersections. Мы не можем подвинуть веревочку, чтобы исчезло э, пересечение, потому что один плюс один это два, а должно быть меньше, чем два, чтобы можно было воспользоваться так сказать, избытком размерности. По-русски это называется чуть-чуть подвинуть. Right, so we've got these circles in the on S, so we so we have To sphere is we have a knot K intersecting the two points, and we have a, and we have circles on uh, we have these circles. So so the C B circle. Mm. So good. Let's consider how can a circle lie on S on S and miss K. So, for example, we could have a circle like this, or we could have a circle like this, and what distinguishes those two curves is that this curve bounds a disk. That misses the knot. C bounds the disc on S missing K. Okay. Or we have a curve C bounds the disc. These the only cases, so that is to say, my claim is that if I have a curve on the two sphere, either it bounds a disk on the two sphere, which misses K, or it or it bounds a disk on the sphere that intersects K at a single point. Why is that the only possibility? What if, for example, I had this curve C? Тогда надо взять внешность, скажите. Внешность надо взять. Внешность. Экстерия. 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 Внешняя часть. Внешняя часть. Когда, поймите, у вас окружность делит на две части. И каждая из них является кругом. Ну, поэтому вы должны взять ту, в которой нет этих двух точек. Ну, на картинке надо... Представьте себе, экватор делит сферу на два полушария. Mm -hmm. 
Да. Но при этом, если вы чуть-чуть адекватно сдвинете, и даже не чуть-чуть, то все равно делит на топологические две эквивалентные части. Понятно, да? На то, что называется диск. Да. Круг, пожалуйста. Угу. Вот. Поняли? Да. Why? Because this curve here, look at the outside of the disk on the sphere. So remember this is a sphere. Okay, so outside the curve, that's a disk and it misses K. See that? Видели? Вне вот этого круга на самом деле круг. Here's the picture. So here's S. Нет, ну, окружность, лежащая на, не обязательно окружность, это кривая это такая, это. лежащая на сфере, делит ее на два множества, фактически на два круга. So let's deal with each case separately. So firstly, uh, let's So now let's look at look at all those types of curves. So they could look like let's do it a bit bigger. Okay, these kind of curves. Помните самый внутренний круг, внутри которого уже ничего нет? So choose an, so we've got these kind of curves, let's choose an innermost one. Okay, and what that means is we find choose such a curve so that it bounds a disk missing all the other curves. Okay, so we have all these circles and we start off by choosing one that bounds a disk that misses all the other circles. We can always do that. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this one, and then we, we move the next and the most one, and we continue on. Okay. So, let D is such a disk. Curve lies on S uh, minus K, but the curve 
also lies on the boundary of this three ball. So just remember that we've got this, the picture is that we have this three ball. And we have the surface S intersecting the three ball. Along the surface. B. I'll draw another picture in a moment. We have this three ball. We have this curve C. C. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, on the sphere, this curve bounds the blue disc. Okay. And on the other hand, this curve lies on the boundary of B. So it also bounds a disc on B. So that can then D prime uh, on the boundary of B. Uh, this be a disc. Это очень важно. Дело в том, что топологически и граница B и S это сферы. А ну, линия, которая топологическая окружность, на сфере делит ее на два круга. Поэтому то, что он нарисовал, и там, и там, это топологические круги. И у них есть общая граница. It's also another two spheres, so it bounds a disk on that one too. Okay. Okay, so now claim. Let's see if you, maybe you guys can help me out with this. We claim that D prime, this disk on the boundary of the ball B, uh, also uh, can be chosen. To miss. Mm -hmm. что, слушай, Алексей, пожалуйста, сказали, что потом, когда вы закончите работу, Не, без проблем, я писать их не буду. Я могу их унести домой, и тогда в пятницу они здесь будут. Запишите. Ну, прийти, и тогда пусть ничего не будет делать. So, see why this would be true. So, on the one hand, we know this disk D, on the so it's a little bit confusing because we're correct. There are two two spheres happening. There's this two sphere and there's this other two sphere and they intersect along the curve. On the one hand, we have this curve bounding a disc on the two sphere S. Okay, that misses K. We know the curve also bounds a disc on the boundary of B. Okay, and what I'd like, what we'd like to show is that that disc, that second disc, can be assumed to miss k, can be chosen to miss k. So now let's see why that would be true. Let's see. So notice that the boundary of d prime, which is on the three ball, is the same as the boundary of d. On the one hand, we know C bounds the disk D, which misses K. Now, this curve also bounds a, a, the disk D prime, okay, so it also has this boundary. So the, the A be the 
glue, glue the two discs along that boundary, D prime along C. We have this one disc D bound by C. We have another disc D prime bound by C. So we've got these two discs, and they both have the same boundary. Ну, линия, линия C разделила поверхность на два круга. То, что плодичная это поверхность сферы. Она разделила на два. Вот один из них мы назвали D, другой назвали D штрих. So we have two discs. So here we're just going to be think, we're just thinking abstract. We have two discs, and they have the same boundary. Okay, so let's glue the two discs together along the boundary. And then we get a two sphere. Смотрите, D штрих мы взяли из границы сферы, которая, вот, которая граница B. D мы взяли из э, S. Но поскольку они по, склеены по окружности фактически, то у нас получилась сфера. Понятно, да? То есть, понимаете, да? Мы одно взяли из одной, другое из другой, но поскольку они и, и там, и там круг, склеены по окружности, значит получилась э, сфера. Мы выбирали так, чтобы D не пересекалось. Помните, мы сейчас рассматриваем тот случай, когда, когда круг не пересекается с узлом K. Consider how K could intersect the sphere. То есть может пересекать только верхнюю половинку. D штрих это то, что. Нет, как я из них верхний, как я нижний, это же бессмысленно говорить, то, что все хитро в пространстве расположено. Но D штрих, вот на доске написано в центре, видите, D штрих это часть поверхности шара. Вот там написано DB, границы шара. А, а D это то, что из S пришло. Теперь понятно? Как может пересекать? В четном числе точек. A curve, a, a knot, or intersect a, knot, a, a, a sphere, and number of points where the points are connected by an arc on the inside of the sphere. Is that okay? Точки пересечения делятся на те, где мы входим внутрь сферы и выходим. Но опять-таки, там, где мы идем прямо по сфере, это можно чуть-чуть подвинув убрать. Можно все точки считать, что это или точки входа, или точки выхода. Ну вот разбили их на пары. Вошли, вышли, вошли, вышли.
ну, может быть, несколько таких линий, потому что узел может сложно устроен быть, поэтому точек входа и точек выхода может быть много. So, so the, the knot can intersect the sphere at a number, in a, an even number of points, and we know those intersections have to occur on the upper hemisphere, because remember, it misses, the knot misses the lower hemisphere. So, uh, so K intersects the upper hemisphere D prime in an even number of points. On the other hand, D prime lies on the boundary of this pole B. Now, how many times does the knot intersect this two sphere? Remember, this is a uh, this is our two sphere and forming a connect sum P and Q. В скольких точках, в принципе, узел э, пересекает э, поверхность шара. Помните? Вообще-то в двух. Скажите. Число два, скажите. Two. 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 Okay. So on the hand, D, so, and... This two sphere intersects K in two points. Okay, so that's somewhere. So D prime intersects the knot in an even number of points. On the other hand, D prime lies on this two sphere. So and with that two sphere intersects K in two points. So how many points could D in this D prime intersect K in? Четное число не превосходящее двух. Two or, or zero. Or zero. Okay. So either, so either k equals. No, oh, does this make sense? If I put bars around, it means a number of them. Either. Yes, yes. Then you. Then you. Equals zero or two. Okay. Okay. So now. If the prime m6 are not prime and, and not k and zero points, then we're done. Okay. So if it's zero, then we're done. If the prime m6 k zero, we're done. If the prime m6 k in Two points. In two points, then what will we do? So this d prime it lies on. Remember that d prime lies on this two sphere B. The inner six k in two points. If we had our disk prime d prime. D prime and M6 are not in two points, then what could we do? We want a D prime on the we want a disk on this two sphere bound by this curve that intersects that misses K. So what happens if we if we chosen this D prime and we and we have this situation? How can we change our choice of D prime? Нам нужно, чтобы пересечений не было, а пересечений ровно два. Мы можем заменить d' на, на его внешнюю область. Нет, на d нельзя, потому что d это лежит совсем на другой поверхности. И не на, вот, d' лежит на другой. А вот у d лежит на s, да? d', но у d' есть внешняя, ну, 
Вторая половинка сферы. Ну, да, вот скажите. Не би, а баундри. Ты бы поняли? Если было пересечение, то оно должно было быть в двух точках. Но в таком случае надо было выбрать просто не тот круг. Смотрите, мы когда делали конструкцию, то мы говорили, что линия С, помните линию С, делила границу шара B на два круга. И мы взяли один из них и его обозначили D'. Ну замечательно, вот эта D' пересеклась с узлом в двух точках. Ну, соответственно, поскольку в принципе граница B пересекалась с узлом в двух точках, то второй вообще не пересечется. Вот его и надо было на самом деле брать. То есть мы просто ошиблись с выбором вначале. И мы сейчас можем изменить свой выбор и взять другую половинку границы шара. Here's our two sphere S, and uh, this is our three ball, and we've just seen that we're looking at the case where C, C is this boundary here. Okay. Ah, oh, uh, there's a little picture I want. Um, oh, yes, it's okay. And uh, we're looking at the case where C bounds a disk on the two sphere. C bounds a disk on the two sphere, and it bounds a disk D prime, D prime on the boundary of B, and these two disks uh, miss K. Мисс – это не пересекаются, как бы промахнулся. Now, let's say, now, uh, since A 
to speak. A is already there. C, this is at two sphere A. Okay, so it's this hemisphere glued to this hemisphere. Okay. This this two sphere misses K, so it bounds a three ball. It's also disjoint from K. So we've got a ball and we've got a B, we've got a two sphere S, and we know that this part of the two sphere, uh, this two sphere S contains a, uh, sorry, this, this two sphere here bounds a ball that misses K. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll just, I'll draw the picture. We can use this. So we have this ball here. Let's go with B, zero. This ball, ball B zero, lies away from the knot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify a B, just so that it uh, misses misses this ball. So I'm just going to take this ball. I'm just going to poke it out. Okay, so we just. So do you see what happened? This is happening away from the not K. So I just modified the ball we started off with just by, um, if you like, adding adding this extra three ball. So now what we get is a new th new ball B prime, which no longer intersects the surface long neck curve, the two sphere long neck curve. So if you like. If we started off with B, okay. Point поняла, что произошло? Да. Мы изменили поверхность B. Она пошла вдоль вот этого такого вытянутого пальца, я не знаю как это назвать. И соответственно она перестала пересекаться. А потому что мы уже знаем, что в этом месте нет пересечения с узлом. Значит, мы можем идти. Нам ведь важно, чтобы от узла были отсечены вот, вот такая-то и такая-то. Важны точки пересечения с узлом. А в других местах, как идет шар, ну это не так интересно. Соответственно, вот весь этот шарик, который он заштриховал, вот то, что внутри А, да, 
он не пересекается с узлом. А значит, можно продеформировать. Вот там у него был такой диск, который лежал на, на границе. Можно этот диск чуть-чуть вот, вот продвинуть, 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 и вместе с ним всю поверхность шара. И она пойдет в обход вот так, как нарис, нарисовано. Поняли? Choose instead B prime, okay? There will also be a three ball that contains P intersecting K in two points, because we only changed B uh, in a in a in this region here, which is away from K. So if we had a, a separating ball B, then all we've done is we've just changed the ball. Okay, they understand. Okay. Okay, so continuing this way. Вы видели, что произошло? У нас стало на на один круг пересечения меньше, на одну окружность меньше. We started off with a bunch of uh, intersections, curves of intersection between the boundary of B and S. Okay. We first considered the curves that that uh, bound disks on the boundary of B that miss K. Okay. We chose an innermost such curve, and then we just showed we chose an innermost curve. We just showed that we could change our B to remove that curve intersection. So we keep, once we've done that, we choose our next innermost curve in this intersection that, ba that bounds a, a ball missing K. And we apply this procedure to remove that until we've remo removed all those curves of our case one, okay, which were the ones that bound a disk missing K. Okay. So continuing, we, we can assume we, we remove all those curves uh, that intersect, uh, that the bound disks that miss K. Okay, so continuing. Can that induction? The induction, we can all these straight lines remove. Starting from the inside and remove the inside. Innermost, innermost curve argument. Okay. So this means that we're left with type two. Осталось разобрать второй случай, когда С разделяла точки пересечения. Помните, там были две точки? Помните? These were those curves, those which bound the disk on S intersecting K. Okay, so let's look at 
this situation. Two, which I'll draw a picture of. Remember, these were the ones we had our two sphere S, and type two were the curves we had our not K. Type two were curves of this form that intersect the intersected disk. Uh, missing, uh, intersecting K at one point. <laughs> okay, so you consider such a curve. So now, so now, so let me just say with uh, so let me let me say that again we're, 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 we're left for the case where all these curves are of this type okay now let's consider the intersection between S and the three ball. A two sphere and a three ball. So I have a two sphere. Let's, let's do this transcendently thing again. How could a two sphere intersect the three ball? Как может двумерная сфера пересекать трехмерный шар? При этом их... нет. Имея в виду, что они могут быть изогнуты. Она сфера в топологическом смысле. Не кривая, почему? Поверхность. Подумайте, это же это же должно. Вы поверхность пересекаете с шариком. Ну, скорее не круг, несколько кругов, правильно? Ну, может быть, несколько, если такая кривая поверхность. Если можно представить себе шарик таким вот изогнутым. Ну, тогда да. Вот, и сфера с ним пересекается. Ну, скажите, может, несколько кругов. А сфера в секторе с рыбой? Ну, это, ну, на самом деле, я вернусь к этому вопросу, может быть, я задам вам простой вопрос для сейчас. Могут ли они... Intersect in a disk. Let me draw a three ball. And let me draw a so the, the sphere could cut through the three ball and a disk. Нет, нет. Вы скажите, что да. Вы же понимаете, что может, может пересечь. Скажите. Okay, so let's let's because it's going to turn out to be a, a special situation. So, so firstly, um, now consider the intersection of the sphere and disk, and since uh, the boundary uh, are curved. We could have. Let me let me start off with this. 
Okay, so the sphere intersects the boundary of this ball and is in circles. Okay, so let's consider what those what this intersection could look like. So we have a ball, and we have this a curve, a circle on the boundary, and it also lies on this two sphere. So to start off with, we could have that the two-sphere intersects, intersects the three-ball in a disk, like this. Here is our curved set, our, our circle, and it just pokes in a little bit. We could have, say, one uh, a disk. Now then, the disk, so firstly, is this okay? We have a curve on the, on the boundary of B uh, intersecting S, so we could have the case that the curve bounds a disk inside the three ball. Just this picture. Do you see what we're saying? If the curve is one curve, then it actually divides the sphere on Два круга. Надеюсь, что они сейчас замолчат. So here is a sphere. Sphere. Here is a three ball. And the sphere pokes through the three ball along and intersects along this curve. This ball put through and I've got a disc on the inside. Хотят, чтобы вы поняли, что если палец засунешь в пластилин, то будет что-то вроде круга. Что вы понимаете, I understand. I understand. Okay. Okay, so firstly, it's supposed to contain a disk. Now this disk lies on this two sphere S. Can can you remind me? And now here is our S. Okay. Uh, the the and, and the boundary. So since. Uh, the boundary of contains a disk and and contains a disk and uh, so boundary of D is in the boundary of uh, D. So, uh, we have this disc inside the, the three ball. Its boundary, its boundary is one of these one of these curves in here. Okay, but now all these curves in this in this the intersection of the two sphere and the boundary of B are of this form. Okay, so this disc, this disc. So this 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 because this boundary C, in fact, it's precisely this picture. Okay, uh, it's a disc on the two on the two sphere S, and it's bound by a curve like of type two, which is like this, and so the disc has to intersect the knot in one point. Okay, just by our, because we eliminated our, our other type, so and hence. Есть одна точка пересечения с узлом. Okay, because 
we eliminated all the other types. Thank you. 